At the Pharmacy Museum in Kiev, visitors are invited to take a step back in time to 1728. The ornate furnishings and brightly colored jars that line the shelves are originals of the apothecary that once functioned here. Founded by German-born Johann Heiter, it was Kiev's first private apothecary. Later, his son-in-law inherited the business and began a pharmaceutical dynasty. Medicines were made and sold here for more than a hundred years. In the cellar, which was filled up with earth, we found lots of kitchenware, tools and artifacts, which are exhibited here, and even some pieces of furniture, which are afterwards restored. An 100-year-old cash register is a special attraction of the sales area of the pharmacy. In its day, it helped not only register drug sales, but also it kept records of information about patients and open loans. The cash register is still in service, but check paper is no longer produced. Here one can issue a receipt for any given sum, let's say 45 rubles and 54 kopecks. One could buy nine cows or two or three jars of medicine with this amount of money. The appointments of the pharmacist and the prices for the medicines are preserved in this prescription book from 1834. They kept records. Here you can see that the price of the medicine was 15 rubles and 76 kopecks. Kiev residents came here seeking remedies for colds, venereal diseases and skin afflictions. To this day, the pharmacy continues to sell some ointments that are made according to the 19th century recipes. The base of the lotion was a pine tar. It's highly fermented, if coming from an old tree. So one had to know which kind of tar is good and which is not. Also, they used petroleum products. Herbs, insects, reptiles and shells, all these were turned into powders, elixirs and cosmetics. In the laboratory, we can see the tools that the druggists used to prepare drugs and hygienic products. Making these products was a job that required both strength and attention to detail. After grinding the substances down into a fine powder, the druggists would carefully choose the right proportions of each. It was important to take into account lots of factors. The patient's sex, age, even the season because the medications could vary in dosage and in composition. This was a kind of a practical science. These kinds of pills were considered the top of the apothecary's skill. They not only treated illnesses, but also served as a way for people to display their social status. During the balls and receptions, the ladies often used to imitate fainting to attract the attention of their suitors. And when the man approached the lady with a glass of water, she opened this box and the pills inside it matched the color of her dress. It was a confirmation of her high status and her good taste, and the price of one such pill could be equal to the price of a cow or two. Even necessary medications, however, did not come cheap. Those who could not afford them had to rely on a different kind of treatment. Prayers, exorcisms, home-brewed herbal concoctions, and even embroidered towels. It was believed that each symbol and pattern on the towel corresponded to a certain disease. The chambers of monks, herbalists and alchemists were recreated from the rarities found in the pharmacy museum. Even today, visitors to the museum reveal that the beliefs of olden times are not entirely forgotten. The people who come to our museum believe that the alchemists were some kind of magicians who could grant the wishes. So people throw in their copper coins here, symbolizing their wishes, and they hope the copper will turn into gold.